Hello, Birch Tree Artists. We are going to learn how to put the shadows into our birch tree landscape right here. So you're gonna need a pencil, and you might also want to have a pencil sharpener so that you can get a nice tip on your pencil in just a few minutes, you'll see why. So what we're going to do with our birch trees is this. We are going to put on shadows. First, ask yourself if you're a righty or a lefty, because I'm gonna show you how this will be easier if you're a righty or lefty. If you're a righty, you may want to put your shadows going to the right. So from the left to the right. If you are a lefty, you're going to probably want to make yours coming from the right to the left. This way. Okay, so what in the world does that mean? Well, let's take a look at an example. So what I have here are some birch trees and these have their shadows. This shadow ran into that tree, that's okay. This shadow's coming close to the bottom of the paper, that's all right too. This one goes off the paper, that's okay too. I'm gonna show you how to do all these. I even have a tree up here behind a hill and the shadow comes later, not quite connected to the tree, that's fine. So I'm gonna show you how to do some of these shadows on your picture. Thinking about where a light source is, like where the sun set. You don't always have to have the sunset right in the middle, do you? It may be off the screen or off the edge of your paper. It may be over here. This is where it's setting. So the light is coming from that direction. It's so strong, it's the sun, right? But it just doesn't need to necessarily be in the picture itself. Or maybe your light's coming from over here. And so it's casting shadows going this way. Now I'm a righty, so I'm gonna show you how I am gonna approach shadows. The first shadow I'm gonna make is gonna be on this tree right here. If your shadow is coming this way, then on the left side of the tree, at that corner that you have, you're gonna start a shadow angling down and you're gonna go all the way to the bottom of your paper. So it's starting at the corner, going all the way to the bottom of your paper. The other side does not start at the corner. The other side starts a little bit up from the corner about right here because it's casting its shadow from a side of the tree we can't see that's behind our tree because this is fully three-dimensional and round. So that actually starts about right here and stays parallel to the first line that I drew and goes all the way to the bottom. The next tree follows the same rule. So I start right here at that corner again, but this line must be parallel to this right here. So I draw the same kind of angled line parallel to the first and freehand's okay because this is going over some nice natural snow, right? You don't need a ruler. Then again, I don't start at the corner. I start a little bit up from there, draw a parallel line and it hits this tree. That's okay, it's gonna cast a shadow up the side of the tree that we can't see on the other side. So leave that there. Let's talk about that tree. When I make the shadow for this, it would be here, right? Starting there. But isn't that gonna be in this shadow right here? Yes. So I don't need to make this line. I just need to come up and make this one. Like that. So that means that this shadow runs into the shadow from this tree too. So I would continue that rule all the way across my paper like this. So I'm gonna even that out a little bit. This one, start here, stay parallel. Don't worry about the log, just pass by it. Staying parallel to these lines, of course. Go up a little bit. Stay parallel. I run into a tree, that's okay. This one, I would start here, but again, it's in this shadow. So I go to the other side, go up a little bit. Go up a 
up a little bit. Then the last one. So there we go. Now we've got our shadows. Here's the next thing you wanna do. This little log right here, he gets a shadow too. But this little log shadow is gonna be shorter. So I might just draw out a little bit from there. Same rules apply, out a little from there. But instead, I go across like this, round those corners. And now my little log has a shadow. It's a long shadow because remember, the light's coming from below the horizon, so it casts long shadows. Now here's how you're gonna color in your shadows. If you need to pause here to finish drawing your shadows, then do so, and then unpause, and here we go. I'll show you how to color these in. You don't wanna use the tip of your pencil. You might have seen artists hold their pencils like this before, and this is why we want a pencil sharpener, so that we can make the longest tip that we can get, a nice long tip of lead. So from here to the tip is how much of a surface we'll have to use, so here to the tip. And watch what we do. Again, if you're a righty, you don't wanna end up with pencil all over your hand, so start on the left side. If you are a lefty, start on this side, and you'll color in your shadows going this way. Because remember, if you're a lefty, your shadows might've been going this way, so it's easier. Okay, so now I take this, I'm going to very gently sort of outline into my shadow with the side of my pencil. I am gonna go gently over that outline that I made to rough it up. I don't want that to look so, you know, non-natural. I want it to look more organic. So I do go over that line. Then I'm gonna use my pencil and drawing in this direction with the line of the shadow. I'm just gonna go gently back and forth and fill it in mostly. It does not have to be all the way filled in because there would be light kind of reflecting off of some of these pieces of snow in there. And you're gonna do that for your whole picture. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna finish filling these in. You can watch, see what it looks like when it's all done.